You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. Hey, everybody. My name is Eric Escobar. I am a penetration tester, which basically means I break into uh, corporate networks on a daily basis. So I always wanted to be an engineer of some sort. Wasn't quite sure what kind of an engineer. I grew up playing with Legos, building things, taking things apart. So it was uh, one of those things that it was a pretty easy thing when my family was like, you know, you should go into engineering. I was like, hold on a second. I can get paid to do what I just do for fun. Like, that sounds kind of cool. So I took a uh, like a survey of engineering class when I was in high school. And uh, my my toss up was like computer science, computer engineering, and civil engineering, which are far different ends of the spectrum. Um, and so I basically like pick between the two of them and I pick civil engineering. So uh, I went to school and I got a four-year degree in civil engineering and a master's degree in civil engineering um, and started my professional life as a civil engineer. And now I'm a registered civil engineer in the state of California. So I could still technically uh, build a building, build a hospital, build uh, you know, whatever, whatever you need to. But um, yeah, just took that degree and leveraged it right into cybersecurity. <laughs> I've always loved computers. That's why my second choice was going to be like computer engineering or computer science, something along those lines. And it was one of those things that as, as many situations happen, your roommate from college comes home and you're like, oh, I want to do something fun. Like, what are we going to do? Go over to his parents' house. Uh, manage to break into their Wi-Fi or do, do some, you know, like nefarious hijinks. That's completely harmless. His dad gets home and is like, whoa, 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 whoa. How did you guys, like, what did you guys do? Uh, and, you know, I would come to find out later that he is like the, you know, director of security for some cybersecurity company uh, in California. And he's like, hey, how about I replace your engineering salary and you come work t- for me in the cybersecurity arena? I was like, Okay, but I don't know anything. He's like, trust me, if you could do, you know, whatever hijinks we did, you know enough to get started. Your mind is in the right place. So make the hop, and I uh, haven't looked back since. So I went from being civil engineer to working on, like, the blue team or, you know, defensive uh, team for a company called Barracuda Networks. And then basically I just got involved in the whole, like, InfoSec, so information security like culture. We did, you know, went to DEF CON, went to a bunch of different conferences. Um, And at one of these conferences, I, you know, was just chatting with somebody and, uh, you know, we hit things off and he's like, hey, if you if you're ever interested in uh, moving over to the red or the offensive side of things, um, you know, we'd love to interview. So, you know, a couple couple interviews later and I started working in an adversarial role um, at SecureWorks, which is currently where I am now. And I've uh, it's like dream job 100 percent. I basically just make the analogy of, of I'm a bank robber for hire and companies will come hire SecureWorks to try and break in and steal everything that they hold dear, right? And, and all companies are different. Um, and, you know, on any given day, I commit several thousand felonies if I didn't have permission to do what I do. One week, I could be breaking into a literal bank. The next week, I could be breaking into, you know, some type of tiny hardware um, or just a website. When you work in one level of like security or like you work for a company in security, you typically deal in only what they deal with. 
Whereas in my role, since we go through so many different companies testing their security, you get to see the inside of several dozen networks, maybe in a given month, right? And so it's it's awesome because you get to learn really quickly on your feet. Um, and yeah, you're you know any any type of expertise, it's really easy to say like, hey, I don't know, but let's learn, like you know, learn by doing kind of a thing. best personality trait is curiosity because you know there's sure there's a lot of items that you have to like go through and you know check the box to make sure that you did it correctly but there's always that like huh i wonder if i did this how would either the program the hardware the website how would it respond then from there i feel like if you have the natural curiosity to say how does this work and what happens if then it kind of blossoms out into like whatever other personality trait that you have you know our team is filled with the most weird ragtag, you know, group of people, you know, you have a civil engineer like myself, we have RV salesmen, we have physicists, we have electrical engineers, we have, gosh, I mean, you name it. Everybody is has those weird quirky traits. And I think the one that unifies all of us is we're all curious about how things work. And that's what's really nice is that there's no one, there's no one like archetype of, of a hacker pen tester. It's, it's completely across the board. I think the collaboration piece is is key because again, there's nobody that knows everything, right? There's no one that even knows 10% of everything. You know that like, if you need to get on the phone with somebody, hey, this person's a real smooth talker on the phone, let's pick them up. And so having just that, you know, the list of skill sets as they go across the board. And so pulling from everybody's life experience and then everybody's also spread across the globe. And that's, it's all, you know, a whole other crazy thing dealing with time zones. And it's like, you know what, let's tap on the Japanese team to see if they've ever encountered, you know, X, Y, or Z. And so it's, that collaboration is, is absolutely key, um, especially when you don't know everything. Just start start listening to security podcasts just to learn the vernacular of like what words are commonly used and how things are phrased. Um, And then just start, you know, going and looking for either if you want to get involved in like a bug bounty program, or if you don't know anything at all, and you're starting from scratch, there's like $30 Udemy courses that will walk you through, you know, your first years of pen testing from, you know, setting up a full active directory domain and how to compromise in common misconfigurations. I've had Oh gosh, maybe three or four personal friends now that have come from all walks of life that have, you know, gotten their OSCP or in progress of getting their OSCP. And even just if they're in progress, it's led to jobs where, you know, one of them used to be a former pastor and now he's in information security, right? So it's, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different windy paths, but really the first thing is just get started, learn how people talk about, you know, in the industry and then go after a certification if you can. Like my whole thing is like, if we can just teach people in a fun way, like that'd be great. Now, a word from our sponsor, the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute, currently seeking qualified applicants for its innovative Master of Science in Security Informatics degree program. Study alongside world-class interdisciplinary experts and gain unparalleled educational, research, and professional experience in information security and assurance. Interested U.S. citizens should consider the National Science Foundation's CyberCorps Scholarship for Service program, which covers tuition and a $6,000 annual professional development allowance, as well as providing a $37,000 additional annual stipend. Apply for the scholarship and the fall semester by March 1st. Learn more at cs.jhu.edu slash msi.